Welcome to Community Connections, a local news magazine that highlights the activities, people, conversations, and events that mean most to you in Southwood County. My name is Tom Laux, and in this September 2013 edition, we sit down in the studio and talk with Laura Nelson about the cranberry harvest and tours in the area. Following, we'll hear more about Riverview Hospital's annual Love Light celebration from Diane Pokrant. And finally, John Young from the Rapids Mall will inform us about the annual Farmer's Market. So please enjoy and thank you for joining us on our seventh episode. Today in the studio, we're gonna talk about cranberries here. Month of October is cranberry month in the Wisconsin Rapids area and in central Wisconsin, it's a major industry here. And I have Laura Nelson here from the, from the Visit Wisconsin Rapids. And uh, she's gonna tell you about what's gonna happen here in the month of October. So I'll turn it over to you, Laura. Sounds good. Thanks for having me here, Tom. Um, well, as you mentioned, cranberry harvest is going to be underway in October, and it's going to be a fantastic season this year, um, getting a little bit of a later start. So normally the season is late September through late October. However, it's actually going to be mostly October this year, um, except for those harvesters that are harvesting the white berries, of course. So um, it'll be underway, and um, it's agriculture, but it's also a tourist attraction, which is why it's of interest to me. So um, out at Glacial Lake Cranberries, they offer tours. Um, and I don't know if anybody locally uh, has gone out there to take them, but if they haven't, they really, really, really should. Um, so I've got all sorts of information about, you know, the tours, things you can see out there, um, you know, of course, birding. Gosh, I'm full of it. <laughs> well, there's a lot of stuff to do there on that cranberry tour. They give you a great tour on a bus, mm -hmm. and you can see the cranes out there. They slow down, have you come out, get out, and actually get out and take some pictures as well. I've been on that tour a few different times, uh, mm -hmm. so they just need to go out. It's about 10, 8 miles from here, mm -hmm. uh, out in Cranmore. Yes. Actually, it's yeah, it's out in Cranmore, and and it's a gorgeous drive to get out there. So you know, it's the most beautiful 10 to 15 minutes you've spent in the car, um, and, and so you can kind of view the harvest on the way out. That's what we call the Cranberry Highway, um, heading out of town on um, you know on 54 there, and then of course you'll want to make that stop at Glacial Lake Cranberries. Um, their tour starts. You know, I won't tell everybody everything, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, you gotta leave them wanting more, right? Right. Um, but it starts out with a visit to the Cranberry Link uh, Center there that they have. Um, Phil and Mary are phenomenal with sharing the history of the area, why we're such a rich cranberry country, um, and kind of the product history and so on, how it went from fresh cranberries onto the different products that are offered now. So there's a video, different artifacts, um, maps, pictures, all sorts of cool things like that. And then you're right, you board the berry bus which is so fun. Um, and when you get out to take those pictures, the daring people of the group uh, can actually go down and pluck a berry out of the water, pop it in their mouth, and see what an unsweetened cranberry tastes like. Yeah, it's a little sour. It is, but you know what? It's tart and tangy, that's what we say, but it'll pucker your lips, yeah. so that's kind of fun. Yeah, we have you know, we have ocean spray here that uses mm -hmm. some of those can cranberries. So Definitely. Big plant here, so great. There's a lot of other activities here in the fall that you guys are working on as well. Let's kind of go through that list so people are, know what's going on. Well, sure. Um, October for everybody in central Wisconsin area, of course you think fall fun and you think pumpkins. Uh, so there's two really cool ways that we feature pumpkins in the area. Number one, uh, Nakusa Giant Pumpkin Festival, which um, I think a lot of the people know about locally. But you know, it's it's gigantic pumpkins that weigh like upwards of a thousand pounds, um, and you can do all sorts of things with them. You can bake with them. You can see them get smashed. You can carve them. You can roll them. You can you know, there's so many activities surrounding uh, that that weekend. It's amazing. Um, not to mention, it tends to to mesh really well with peak fall colors, which is right. important beautiful um, so yeah activities for the kids live music vendors and crafters see that pumpkin get smashed to close the day it's I mean it's a blast so um, it's a very unique festival um, and it's going to be the fifth and the sixth I believe um, of October so make sure people head on out yeah it's two days and it's yeah. uh in uh, Nakusa mm -hmm. and a lot of lot of fun stuff there. I know that's been going on for several several years, and they probably right. give you a bus rides to and from. Uh, you know they do that for transportation right, to help for people parking. get in. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the car show's back. I heard that through the grapevine, right. which is cool. I mean, the car show was always there, but it was separated slightly where people had to be shuttled back and forth. Mm -hmm. But apparently, they're one and the same again, so you can enjoy it all on one ground. So well, definitely cool. car shows in the fall are the way to go, just before yeah. they have to put them away for the winter. Well, yeah. They really like to get them out, and hopefully we have good weather that day. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff, you know, the, the pumpkin uh, drop is one of the 
interesting things right. like they hoist this up and then they drop it and there's stuff inside that pumpkin I believe absolutely well you know it's it's kind of the the fun part of the day you know everybody waits and you know and then the kids run out I mean it's a blast it really is cool and it's something you have to experience you know we could talk about it all day but unless you actually go there and check it out you can't say you know. Yeah, you really don't know. And while well, there's some more activities, I know Altenburg's has uh, stuff as well. Right, Altenburg's is always packed with fall fun. I mean, Harold and the clan out there, all of his volunteers, they focus on the kids, which um, is near and dear to my heart, and I know a lot of people is as well. They have children, grandchildren, neighbors, um, you know, friends of neighbors, and, and it's fun to just get a group to go out there. They have, of course, the rides, um, you know, their, their hay rides, they have the corn maze, they have the, the hay fort. Um, he even has has the weekend where he does the candy parachute drop where they get that crop duster going and they drop the candy down. Oh, I mean, talk about lifelong memories for the kids. Um, and each each um, year he has a different fundraiser and I'm not sure which the fundraiser is this year. Oh darn, I don't but, need, Yeah, I don't but each either. year he does do something in the community here mm -hmm. of, of Wisconsin Rapids area and devotes uh, almost a whole weekend of some of the proceeds that go to to help fund that. Yeah, and I think the the corn maze is yep. in particular exactly all the proceeds it. from the yep. corn maze go to that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's such philanthropists out there. Yep. It's all for the kids, it's all for the families and all for the nonprofits of the community. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and you know, you you know when you're a child you always want that perfect pumpkin don't you definitely and there's tons to choose from and you get to just run out there and pick what you want so yeah yep. you always dream. especially with kids uh, you want to go get the the perfect round one not well, the one that's smashed or oblong or lopsided or yep. you know exactly you want yep. the perfect pumpkin yep. and i think as an adult i put that kid hat on again and do that oh, myself. Yeah, absolutely. You get out there and, and everybody knows, you know, some people are the long, tall pumpkins, some people like the big, fat pumpkins, but you know, it's all about yeah. your personality, what you're into, and it's it's a blast out there. They even have a kid-friendly haunted house. Now, I'm, I'm tempted to not call it a haunted house. I think he calls it a spook house. Yes. But it's a lot of fun, and I, I plan to take my little girl out there, and she's going to be 11 months old, so it's <laughs> that not scary. Not to mention I'm kind of a wimp, too. So. Well, when she comes two or three, yeah. And it'll change. So sure. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun here. The fall, there's plenty of activities to do. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if they're looking for more activities, they can go to the website here of Visit mm -hmm. Wisconsin Rapids. Is that right? Absolutely. Visit wisrapids.com. So visit wisrapids.com. People can call me up too. Um, Morgan Vanderhei and myself are over. You know, we're over there in our office, and we just are feeling tons and tons of calls about cranberry harvest season, fall fun, things like that. So um, our phone number out there is seven one five. 422-4650 uh, so feel free to give us a shout um, and just know uh, just for everybody's sake to understand there are cranberry tours offered out at Glacial Lake also the Pittsville FFA are offering their cranberry tours throughout October um, but both require reservations so make sure you reach out to us for more information Great. Well, the cranberries is a major, major thing here in central Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and it brings a lot of dollars to our area. So um, it's really important that the weather cooperates with us here. We don't get any mm -hmm. freezing days, and I know if they do, they'll have the sprinklers on here coming mm -hmm. up. Yep. And uh, as we're taping this here in mid-September, mm -hmm. looks like we're going to get some cold snap here coming, and maybe that'll start the cranberry harvest as well. Perhaps, perhaps. I know at Glacial Lake they're, they're aiming for September 30, so by the time this runs, October, they'll yep. be in full swing. Um, and, and I know that I have heard through the grapevine they're harvesting the white berries now for those white cranberry juices, like the cran grapes and things like that. So uh, that's also pretty interesting. Right. It's amazing with what they can do with cranberries, and these, these beds, are some of them are over 100 years old, they say. Right. I think out at Glacial Lake um, they began in 1873. Holy cow. Yeah, and they take it and they keep using it and using it and it keeps mm -hmm. coming back and coming back, but with the technology that's out there today, the new kind of beaters and stuff, it really be able to harvest most of the cranberries that they maybe not used to be uh, years ago. And, right. and I know Brian Roosh, he actually has a cranberry farm as well that he mm -hmm. does and he harvests those somewhat by hand. Oh my. Well, anybody, you know, who's interested in a workout, I suppose. Yeah, right? So that's, that's another interesting thing, and I, I cool. know he has that out there. But thanks, Laura, for coming by and giving us that information about mm -hmm. cranberries. And, My pleasure. And we'll invite you back here in the studio again later in the winter and talk about some winter activities. Good times. Thanks a lot, Tom. River City's Community Access now has a newly designed website. Visit rccamedia.org to learn about community promotion in the Wisconsin Rapids area. There you can find our social media links as well as our new YouTube channel. This channel is always being updated with new content like Community Connections, Community Snapshot, The Morning Magazine with Carl Hilke, Encourages Are You In, City of Wisconsin Rapids Meetings, and much more. 
You can navigate straight to the YouTube channel by typing youtube.com slash RCCA media into your web browser. Videos are available anytime, 24 seven. So please check out what the new website and YouTube channel have to offer. In the studio today, I have Diane Pokrans here, and we're going to talk about Love Lights. It just got kicked off on September 11th with the Dove release over at the UW Cancer Center here at Riverview Hospital. And she's going to tell us about what the importance of Love Lights is, and it goes until the month of November. So what's the importance of it here in this community? Well, we're very, very fortunate in this community to have the cancer center that we have. And it is going to be almost doubling in size, which is very sad when you think about it because that means that they have so many patients. And last year we bought five infusion chairs that are heated and massage and tables for uh, exam tables and they raise and they lower. And they also go into a seating position because some of the cancers are now in the throat and that way Dr. Anna Olson can put that scope down there and see you know, what it is and the patient does not have to be moved. It can stay on the table and just be set up. And in the, 12, in the 11 years, last, last 11 years, we have raised almost $450,000 and if we go over 50,000 this year, we will have raised a half a million dollars. Wow. Well, you're hoping to raise 50000 this year. Yeah. Who can donate uh, to Love Lights? Any, absolutely anybody. It's not just for cancer survivors or you don't have to have cancer. I get a lot of donations that are just donations and they want to either be a sponsor or a friend of Love Lights. The, the lights are $3 each mm -hmm. and each light gets a name. And then there's $25 donation and that's sponsorship. And it can be 25 and up. And they get to name one person. They can always buy more love lights at $3 a piece and add that to them, which a lot of people do. And then if you're a friend of love lights, uh, that is $100 or more donation. We also have corporate sponsors and they give $350 or more and we have corporate friends, which are, they give $100 or more. And then they are listed on the back of our brochure of whoever has given. And uh, then the newspaper, at the, right before Christmas, uh -huh. will have all the names, the donors, and the, and the recipients of the, of the money given. And that's in the newspaper. It usually takes about four, four days, five days. They don't run it all at once. Sure. And, uh, if you want it on the wall, if it's on the wall, it's definitely gonna be in the newspaper. But if you want it on the wall, you have to have your donation in, and I never remember all these dates, by November 15th. And if, <coughs> if you don't get it in then, you definitely will be in the newspaper, on, but that has to be in by December 13th. And it's usually that last week before Christmas that it starts. Well, if someone wants to donate, how do they get a hold of someone to do that? Do they call the hospital? Do they call you? They can go into the hospital and on the lobby desk, there are uh, trifolds, All right. which are our order things. It tells you where to send them. Mm -hmm. It has the envelope to send it to us. And then you also say that you wanted to donate, buy some lights for somebody. And then we have little cards that with the Love Light logo on it and saying that you have bought either in honor or in memory of someone and then you cross off what you want to, you know, and you give their name and then down below you, mm -hmm. you have your, as the donor. And then inside will be a little card that invites you to the lighting ceremony, which is Dece uh, November 22nd, 6.30 p.m. in the hospital lobby. Now that la it starts in the lobby and then the carolers, the Dickens carolers, go outside, lead people outside, and then we have the lighting of the trees. That's a lot of fun. And actually, those trees are lit and tight throughout the season. You drive down uh, that, the yeah. road, the expressway, and they're lit nice and bright. So that's where the light will go if someone purchases it. Is that that's, correct? That's right. And if you, if you want to honor someone, say someone in the military 
or some people, it's really weird, they really, they just want to honor the United States of America. And it just sort of gives me goosebumps when I see those, and it's Well, like, this really goes to a good cause. It's going oh, to help, absolutely. you know, patients. You never know who's going to get cancer, and you really too many get people too many people, and, and any amount of money will help, even if That's it's a right. dollar. So this year we will be buying right. five more. See, they, uh, somebody has donated enough money for one chair. The chairs are $5,000 each. And so right now we have, uh, we got five last year to replace them, the ones that were there. And now we're gonna be fi buying five more and then they've got money to buy two. So we will have 12 infusion chairs and the same goes with the, with the tables. The tables are over $6,000 each. Medical Perfect. equipment is over the top. And it's changing all the time because they're trying to come up with cures and new ideas and new ways to Well, it's to just help. like a computer. When you buy it, uh, it's old already. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> right. well, before we go, let's talk a little bit about this Paint the Town Pink here. That's new this year. That is brand new this year. And uh, we're hoping to get a lot of the pink bows out. And Mary Nemec is very artsy. And she's the one that's making the bows. And we sell them for $10. And the bows can be ordered in the gift shop, and we will make sure that you get it, or you can call me. My number is 715-325-5906. And if I don't answer, leave a message. I check my messages every day when I come home, because I'm gone a lot doing this. We're also doing another thing. All right. We're selling Van Vandy Wiley. Vandy Wiley, they're out of, out of, uh, Appleton, it's candy bars. Okay. And they are to die for. There's like eight different um, flavors. I shouldn't, I don't know if you call them flavors, but dark chocolate, light chocolate, truffles, and all this kind of stuff. And they sell for a dollar a piece. And we're usually there Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 2 in the hospital across from the gift shop. Now today, needless to say, I'm not there. <laughs> but I will be there tomorrow from, from 10 to 2. And... Uh, Right now I'm having a hard time getting, because some of, some, three of my committee are on vacation. So it takes, I just have to put out a little sure. bit more. Well, this sounds really interesting. And this money uh, goes to your goal of $50,000. Right. So we, the candy bars, we have paint the town pink, and we have love light. So we have yeah. three ways to help uh, get those chairs into yeah. the cancer center. And we just continue. People call us, different organizations, and ask us, like if they're gonna have some kind of a you know, where they have all those um, vendors coming, you know, would we come? Well, we go if we don't have to pay. Alrighty. Cheap, real cheap, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, thank you, Diane, for all that information. And if anybody needs it, you can get a hold of you by your telephone number or uh, you're right at the hospital uh, in the yep. gift shop a lot of times. Right. You can come and see, and those brochures are everywhere. So, again, thanks again. Absolutely. And I thank you very much for having us. All the advertising we can get yep. the better it is because believe it or not after 11 years some people still do not know what love lights is not know what love lights is this is the moment i knew his future had no boundaries there are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Back in the studio, I have John Young uh, from the Farmer's Market here, and he's going to tell you about what's going to happen here in the month of October. Uh, fall season's just around the corner here as we're taping this here in September, and this is airing the entire month here of October. So, John, tell me about what's happening in the month of October here at the Farmer's Market. Well, I'm glad you asked. Tom, uh, we've got some great stuff coming up, uh, coming out uh, here in September. We've already got apples at the market. So we've got uh, we've got one of our vendors. That's all. That's all they do sell, and they have a great selection of apples for all of your apple needs. Whether you're making apple sauce or or just some apples to enjoy as a snack. Uh, the squashes are starting to come in, and by the time you're watching this, I'm sure that everyone's going to have plenty of squashes and other gourds, whether you're looking for decoration or looking for that pumpkin for uh, Halloween at the end of the month. 
Well, this takes place just outside the Rapids Mall. Uh, you being the, the mall manager, uh, mm -hmm. you have a very big hand in the farmer's market because it's helped by the mall. Absolutely. Uh, the mall has been sponsoring the Wood County Farmer's Market, I believe, for the past 12 years. Uh, I, I believe the mall started sponsoring it mm -hmm. shortly uh, around the beginning of the uh, we're right around 2002. Well, we're back in its original place. Uh, it was just over here uh, during the construction phase, and uh, we're back here in the, in the mall parking lot. Pretty much lasts through the end of the month. A lot of vendors there. I'm sure there's maple syrup there as well uh, for people, you name it. Well, actually... Has it sold out? We have sold, we have practically <laughs> sold out of maple syrup. You know, that's, um, that's more of a spring item. The market starts in June of each year. We start the first Thursday or Saturday of June, depending on how the month falls. And we run until the last Thursday or Saturday of October. So this one, this year, market will last until October 31st. That's right, Halloween will be the last day. And if you come out to the market, some of the vendors might even be dressed up in costumes just to add a little bit of fun to the day. Um, well, there's always a lot of stuff there. So again, Thursdays and Saturdays, two days a week, uh, is the market. And what time does it start? Thursdays, the market is open from 9 a.m. until we're scheduled to be open until 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of our vendors get sold out even before then. It's very popular. We've got plenty of people who uh, love coming out to get fresh fruits and vegetables and bakery, all kinds of stuff. We've got an excellent uh, vendor who sells, who makes great baked goods. And so, and they have a very loyal following. The uh, one nice thing that we're just starting this year is we're also going to be holding a winter market. Uh, once the summer market finishes on October 31st, the following Thursday, November 7th, will be the first day of the winter market, and we're gonna hold that right inside the Rapids Mall. We don't, we've only got a few vendors, but we hope that those few vendors provide plenty of product and goods for everyone, what you're looking for during this winter. Uh, our main concern that we're looking for as far as the winter vendors is someone who has the means to grow all those wonderful vegetables during the winter, i.e. having a greenhouse or other means. Now at the farmer's market, uh, for the winter market, can people actually come in with other things that aren't just fruits and vegetables? We will have a couple of those. Um, it's going to be primarily farmers, mm -hmm. um, but we also, one of our farmers has said that they will be bringing some of the baked goods that uh, are bakers mm -hmm. make so and that's going to take place right in the rapids mall so when the patrons come in and they look at the shops they'll be right in the middle and they can Absolutely. take a look and buy there as well Absolutely. that's a great idea i think it'll be a lot of fun for people in the winter months and it really gets busy here uh, people are not wanting to go outside in 20 below weather well certainly you have the mall here it's a great walking path and you know you're guaranteed of getting fresh fruits and vegetables or whatever fruits and vegetables we have that they're fresh yep. and not shipped from California or Florida or wherever they do come from for our grocery stores. Well, it's a healthy way to eat as well. Uh, go to the farmer's market here in October, uh, Thursdays mm -hmm. and Saturdays. Uh, fresh fresh vegetables from all around the county. A lot of different area farmers. And uh, I guess if you're a vendor, they would come and see you if they want to participate. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, actually, it's even easier than that, Tom. Uh, if you're a vendor and you want to participate in the market, all you have to do is show up on market day and set up in a space. We do ask that they wait until 15 minutes before the market start because the spaces are reserved and that gives the people who have a reserved space time to set up in that space. But after that, just show up. I'm out there every single market day and <laughs> I'll know if you're if you're new or not. All right. Well, John, thanks for coming. We want to get you out there. It's Thursday taping day here today. Absolutely. And uh, the farmer's market's going on right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So, again, again, thanks thanks a lot. It's been my pleasure, Tom. You, you have a wonderful day. Alrighty. That wraps up the September 2013 edition of Community Connections. If you know about an interesting topic or person that you feel should be mentioned 
in a future episode, please contact RCCA at 715-423-0441 or send an email to tlaukes at wirapids.org. By getting involved with RCCA, you will be helping the Wisconsin Rapids community in promotion and getting the word out of many great topics and events in the area. To learn more, visit rccamedia.org. Thank you for watching.